Hey everyone, Jason here. Today we're going to take a look at my latest Lego Kinetic sculpture, which is this model of two fur traders paddling their canoe. This is another model I designed to help celebrate the 150th anniversary of Canada. The fur trade was a big part of our history, especially in the few hundred years leading up to our confederation. And a big part of the fur trade was transporting goods via canoe. Before we take a look at the mechanics, let's just take a quick look at some of the details of the model. In the canoe, I have the iconic Hudson's Bay wool blanket, some beaver pelts, and this bundle of goods, which actually houses the Power Functions battery box that powers the model. The figures are built in the same style as the one from my Sisyphus model, although I did try and add a few more details. For example, they're both wearing these scarves, and the one in the front has this fashionable hat, and the one in the back is sporting a ponytail. The canoe is decorated in the front and the back, which as far as I know was fairly common in the era of the voyageurs, which were primarily French Canadians who transported furs. I decided to keep everything open in the base so that when I have it on display, people could have a little bit of a peek at the mechanics that drive the model. As a result, the water is suspended over top of the base and it's just built using these transparent blue 1x4 tiles connected together underneath using these 2x2 clear boat studs. And it actually creates a pretty rigid connection. So the water is actually only supported in a few spots in the model. And on the sandy river bottom, I have some other details like this vegetation, the rocks, some crayfish, and these swimming fish as well. On to the mechanics. There are three main components to the movement. The turning of the paddles, the canoe moving back and forth, and the figures leaning forward and pulling back as they make a stroke. And as usual, I do have a standalone model to better illustrate exactly what is going on. I'll go through all of the main drive components first, and then I'll start adding different parts of the model and explaining how it all goes together. To start with, there is a main drive shaft running down the side here, which can be manually driven using this crankshaft on the side. Or if I slide this gear to engage the motor, I can power it via a battery box. Coming off the front and back of that drive shaft are two transaxles that are connected to these cranks that drive the motion of the oars. Connected to the center of the drive shaft is another crank which drives this piston connected to the red block so that it drives it back and forth. And in the canoe there is a cavity that fits over top of this white 2x2 brick and that's how the canoe is driven back and forth. The end of the piston also has an A-tooth gear on it, which is sandwiched between two gear racks. The top gear rack is fixed in position, while the bottom gear rack is connected to this shuttle, which can slide back and forth. The result is that the reciprocating motion of the piston is multiplied by a factor of two, so that the shuttle travels twice the distance as the red block. Each end of that shuttle has a Technic pinhole, which is where the base of each figure will be connected to. And I'll explain why that's important as we connect everything together. First, we'll add the canoe, which just fits over that white block, as I mentioned. And in this demo model, the canoe just rests on the tiles of the water and slides back and forth on them, which is the way I originally designed it. But in the final model, I actually added some freely spinning wheels underneath the canoe for it to rest on because it ended up being quite heavy. So just having it slide on the surface of the water uh, resulted in a lot of friction. Next we're going to add the figures, each of which has a lift arm that extends underneath the canoe. And they're anchored at their center, which is where their hips are located, onto the canoe where the seat is. If we just keep the canoe stationary, we can control the leaning of the figure by moving the base of that lift arm back and forth. Let's say we want to move this point back four studs relative to the position of the canoe, but the canoe itself is being moved back four studs with each stroke. That means relative to the stationary base, 
we actually need to push this point back eight studs. And that is why I have the travel distance of that shuttle multiplied by two. I'll hook it all up and hopefully you'll be able to see all that a little bit clearer in action. Now all we need to do is add the ORs, each of which is connected to the model in three points. The upper forearm is connected using a friction pin so that it maintains a constant elbow angle throughout the motion of the stroke. The lower forearm is connected using a regular non-friction pin so it's allowed to change the elbow angle. And of course the base of the oar is connected to the crank that drives its motion. And that is about all there is to it. As always, thanks for watching, keep on building, and I will see you next time.